buying your first car. It's almost as bad as buying your second car. There are a lot of great options. There are a lot of bad options. Today we're here to talk about all the great options. Hello everybody, I'm Fry Guy, and today I'll be talking about the best first cars to own. Now this list won't necessarily consist of cars that are just great on gas or maintenance, because it's obvious. You can get a Corolla or a Fit or something like that. This will contain cars that look good, but also won't break the bank. Starting off, we have the Lexus IS250. It has a 2.5 liter V6 with 204 horsepower. Now this thing comes in all-wheel drive or booty wheel drive, and it comes in a six-speed automatic or six-speed DIY transmission. This thing covers all your wants and needs. Well, unless you really like coupes, but even then it comes in a hardtop convertible, but it has four doors. It has over 200 horsepower because 16 year olds who don't have a car yet want something over 200 horsepower or it's considered slow. It has rear wheel drive for when you get peer pressure and doing a burnout at a car meet. All in all, I really do think this car is really great and it suits all your wants and needs and it's pretty much a Toyota. It will last forever. Everybody knows that. Maybe you want something a little newer and a little meaner looking and that's where I have the Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Now it has a 2.3 liter four cylinder with 310 horsepower. I honestly think this is the perfect Mustang for teenagers who want a Mustang considering the fact that it has a manual for all the manual enthusiasts. It has 310 horsepower which is way more than enough. Trust me, it's way more than enough. And it has all the looks of the Mustang without the actual sound. I honestly don't think it sounds bad for a four cylinder and a lot of people may actually really like the sound. And there are some who actually prefer it over the actual V8 sound. They may not be actual people, but, you know, they still like it. All in all, I feel like this is a great option and it'd be great for teenagers. As long as you keep that traction control on, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Keep it off and you'll be L on well. Something a little more agile that spins the fronts would be the Scion TC. Now this has a 2.5 liter four cylinder with 180 horsepower and I honestly feel like this is a really great option as well. It does have a Camry engine, but that's not a bad thing considering the fact that it's really great on gas. So good looks and great miles per gallon. What could go wrong? Yeah, I know the horsepower is not that high, but trust me, when you actually use 200 horsepower, you'll see that you probably need something a little slower. It's really great. It's sporty. Front wheel drive will keep you out of trouble. I honestly think this is a great recommendation for our first car. Something for the more mature teenagers would be the Infiniti G35. Now this has a 3.5 liter V6 with about 275 to 306 horsepower. It comes in a sedan and a sedan in and a six speed manual for the ones who keep drooling over it. This car is a really, really good one. The only issue I would probably have with it is the fact that it'd probably be a bit more expensive to maintain the higher the mileage goes considering the fact that this is a luxury car but a lot of them get sold and a lot of them get beat on so check around forums and see you know what to look out for just so you know that you're getting a decent car and not one that's been ran into the dirt by five generations of people but it's pretty fast. I will. Yeah, it's pretty fast. It looks good. It sounds like a trombone, which a lot of people don't like. But honestly, I don't mind it. It sounds really good. I definitely recommend this car if you can handle it. Something still on the fancy side with debatably less cool points would be the Acura TL. Now, this thing has a 3.2 liter V6 with 270 horsepower. And honestly, I really do feel like this is a great car as well. I had a buddy who had one. His transmission went out at about halfway to 300k miles. It's pretty much a Honda. It'll last forever. The one thing I will say is it's pretty much like the G35. You kind of want to check forums as there are a lot of them get sold and a lot of them have been beaten on. But if you can find a really clean example, I do feel like this is a really great option that you'll love and your parents will love too for the final one it's going to be something on the german side you know i know they're not really known for reliability but they have some hidden gems out there and one of those is the audi a4 which has a 3.2 liter v6 with 265 horsepower i honestly think this is a really great option 
it looks good it sounds really good and it does still look good i mean i know i keep mentioning that but it still looks really good for how old it is it has the all-wheel drive for all your power sliding stuff that you most likely will do what you shouldn't do and it's just a really really great option it has all your little luxury stuff has all your wants and needs it's a really great option that you don't want to pass up i can definitely tell you that buying the car isn't as fun as actually getting to use it but also buying a car that you won't be able to use is even worse now i know there are just some people who can't afford more expensive cars or just can't even afford just a decent one and that's okay everybody has their own budget and you shouldn't be ashamed of which of said budget that you have because at the end of the day if you just need something to get you to a to b you just need something that gets you to a and b and nothing else now i know for a lot of enthusiasts they kind of let the wants take over their needs and they end up pulling the trigger on something that they probably shouldn't have gotten and later on they end up mad or they may just end up hating cars because it that ruined their passion for them because although they may may have done enough research they ended up getting pretty much hustled by somebody trying to scam them and wanting to get rid of their car that was pretty much defective so i would really really look out for that and really just look into some research and if you can have you can ask anybody like ask family or friends just what you should do or even look online. There's so much information out there that you could use to help you with this type of stuff. I don't want to see a lot of young enthusiasts have their passion ruined because they didn't do enough research and they just saw what looked cool and went after that. Um, I know it can be very, very tempting, especially seeing cars at low prices. But if you don't know what you're getting into, it's better to just not get into it at all than to go into it and try to dig yourself out of the big hole you dug yourself in so i know that this list may not pertain to everybody in which it's not supposed to um it's just these would be my recommendations if you were just able to get one of these cars i know some people can only go for a more economical type of car Especially if they really need one more than want one. But even just for the ones that want one but can't really afford the cars that they want. it's It can get really hard when you have to end up with something that you don't really want. Um, but the best thing you can really do is just stay on the grind and save up and really work hard for that car that you really want. Because then you'll appreciate that a lot more. Another thing you have to consider is what type of car owner would you be? There are a lot of people who say they can handle a set amount of power or oh, I'll be mature and not street race and then end up on the side of the road because they're getting a speeding ticket or end up crashing their car that they really liked and now they're sad about it. You really have to sit up and ask yourself, is this car going to take the beating I'm going to give it? Or am I able to get something nicer that probably won't take as many punches as say like an older Civic or Corolla? But I'll appreciate the car, so I won't have to worry about any of that type of stuff. And there are a lot of people who need the beat-up Civic, but don't want to admit it because they want to get that thing that they want. And then after that thing that they were warned about happens, that they said they weren't going to do, they end up mad or sad about it. That's just another thing to consider as well when, getting a, when buying your first car, especially your first. You know, this is... Just something to start off as well. You don't have to start off with like an RT Charger or say a E-Class Mercedes because you can always move up to those types of cars. It happens, I've seen it all the time. I've seen friends who have this one car and then end up moving up to a way better one in a matter of a year or two. It's all about patience and just staying on the grind and really working to what you want to get. All in all, if you have to get a car that just suits your needs, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, having a car in general is pretty cool. 
Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it, go check out more. If you didn't like it, go check out more. And if you have any recommendations, don't be scared to put them down in the comments either. I would really like to see if there are some other recommendations that people have or some other really great best first cars or really great first cars that I just haven't seen yet. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.